Welcome to the Whiskey and Wisdom Podcast, coming to you from the Cargo District Recording Studios in Wilmington, North Carolina, where we discuss the most fascinating topics of life. I'm Tyler Yaw with my co-host, Chris Kelly, and each week we interview a special guest to learn how they acquired their wisdom over a glass of whiskey. So sit back, pour yourself a glass, and enjoy Whiskey and Wisdom. Welcome back to the Whiskey and Wisdom Podcast. As per usual, as per usual, per usual. That, yeah, sounds good to me. I don't know. <laughs> Starting off great already. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Whiskey and Wisdom Podcast. You have your co-hosts who are always here. I'm Chris Kellum. And I'm Tyler, y'all. This week we bring on someone I just met like five minutes ago, but he knows quite a few people who've been on the podcast and people who are coming on. Yeah. Introduce yourself. I'm Mike Rakoski. Uh, I've lived in Wilmington since 1991 and oh, wow. consider it home. Nice. That's awesome. So he's been here longer than most people have been alive. <laughs> I don't know about that. but <laughs> well, today happens to be my birthday. So you, yeah, I was going to say, feel a, a little bit old birthday. too at the same time. <laughs> That's perfect. More than most people have been alive. Yeah. <laughs> the ones who this, listen to the podcast. That may be fair. But. Sure. <laughs> happy birthday i think this is the first time ever that we've had a podcast actually on someone's birthday yes out of the 95 podcasts that we've recorded to date yeah i'm super so. excited it's kind of that milestone day and get to talk about life and stuff with you guys so it's it, yeah. it seems fitting yeah lives in the ether forever now so you can always go back and remember this birthday that's right <laughs> thank you so, because it's your birthday, we let you pick out one of our whiskeys. He picked out the Larceny Small Batch. If you remember, this is one of the ones we had back in the, the Very early, early days. days. Yeah, but Small Batch is super classic. Has a classic bright new copper color aroma. Should be some fresh bread, toffee, some butterscotch, and should have a buttery caramel and honey notes with a rich mouthfeel. Feel, I guess. And the last time we had it, it was a. A riff on a mule. Yeah. So it's the first time we're having it straight. It's quite tasty. Ooh. Very good. That has a lot of flavor. Mm-hmm. Very- when it comes to bang for your buck, I don't I don't know if there's many better ones out there, if any. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good one. This is an easy one. You can go to the ABC store anytime, pick it up, and you don't feel like you're breaking your bank, but you still get all the good flavors out of it. 100%. Yeah, I always feel bad when everyone's like, you have to get an allocated bottle of something. And I'm like, you really don't. No. I mean, well, it's largely you feel like you're stealing it. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's such a good one. But now that we're drinking on a, a little bit, tell us a little about yourself. So I grew up in uh, Pennsylvania. Okay. And uh, what part? Outside Allentown. Okay. So the I'm, Philadelphia area, Eastern, Eastern yeah. PA. I'm from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. So we very, lived very in Bluebell for a little while. Oh, yeah. Uh, as a kid with my dad. So I was born to a mom that had me at 16. Yeah. And uh, so super young parents. Don't remember a bad day in my childhood. I loved yeah. it. They were great parents, super young, but just very loving and just enjoyed my childhood a great deal. And ended up in Wilmington because I worked for restaurant chains. I worked for Perkins mm. Restaurants. And they asked me if I would relocate to the Carolinas. And I helped to open the one that used to be on College Road. Oh, um, yeah. So that's what originally brought me to Wilmington. I miss that place. It's so good. And so, I did that so for good. quite a while. Yeah. And so when I was growing up, I, I loved my family, mm-hmm. but I didn't want to be anything like them. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, you have those those days where... I think at some point in life, you decide that you have to be an architect of your own life and very blue collar. I loved my grandfather, but didn't have a lot of respect for him. He bragged about how he would sleep in his golf cart and the union would protect him and he'd earn double time and all these things. And, you know, so I got a call when I was about 19, 20 years old when I was working for Perkins and said, Hey, would you like to relocate to the Carolinas? And I thought, you know, my family smokes, they don't exercise, they live paycheck to paycheck. They, mm-hmm. again, wonderful people. Yeah. But right. At some point you decide you want to take a different path. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I jumped on it. I was like, yes, absolutely. Get me out of getting kind of sucked into this poverty mentality. Right. And, and I ended up in Wilmington and I've never looked back. I love this town and, and I love the water. I love the beach. I love the people. I love the South. Yeah. The, 
friendliness was really yeah. contrasting to where I grew up, mm-hmm. really, for, <laughs> with strangers. Right? Yeah, uh, exactly. You know, if you're from Lancaster, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I, I did the loop for the first time and people say good morning to me. I'm like, why are right. you talking to me? Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. and, and now I'm, I'm the guy going, good morning, good morning, good morning. You know, yeah. so it's just, a, it's just a great spot. I love it. So to go back a little bit, when did you notice, like, hey, this isn't how I want to live 12. for the rest of my 12? 12 years old. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. my dad actually grew up very similar to how you described there, too. And he said there was a point where he went to, he used to wrestle and he went to a wrestling buddy's house of his, and his buddy's house was massive. And he was like, not everyone lives in the projects. Yep. And like kind of found out that way. So like, what was like that moment at 12 years old? You're like, this, this needs to change. So it's so distinctive for me. So I I came home one day from school Mm -hmm. and I had some friends similar. Mm -hmm. They, well, they they live a little bit different. And I was talking about college. My grandfather was there and my grandmother. And again, I love them and they were doing the best they could. But I started talking about college and Mm -hmm. my grandfather said, why the hell would you ever go to college? And I said, what do you mean? Yeah. He said, well, you, I can get you a job at the plant sweeping floors for 20 bucks an hour as soon as you graduate from high school. And he'd brag about literally sleeping in the golf cart, earning double time, can spit in his boss's face yeah. and never get fired. And something clicked inside of me. Mm-hmm. And, and I honestly, what I said at that point is, I want to figure out how to be the owner and CEO and fire all you thieves. <laughs> right. I mean, this is not right. right. This is, you know, the, the, how can we figure out how to take from someone instead of add value? Right. right. And, and so it was about, I was 12 years old and I kind of went on this journey of, I want something different. Yeah. And, you know, I watched some infomercials at night and there was mm-hmm. this one on how to invest in real estate with no money down. And I, you know, yeah. I was shoveling sidewalks, cleaning off cars, mowing lawns. And, you know, in some cases I probably had more cash than most of my family members stashed at 12. Yeah. And, and I realized this is not, you know, I don't want to go this way. I want to go the way I'm going. And so I subscribed to that. I started listening to Tony Robbins, started listening mm-hmm. to personal development stuff. I started reading and uh, it just kind of led me on that path. And, and then the second kind of, I not, not, I want to go on this different path, right? right? That happened about 12. Leaving that area happened right about 18. Okay. And I had a friend of mine whose mom was a realtor mm-hmm. and she calls me and our over at her house with my buddy, Tony, and she's a realtor and she's like, Hey, I'm getting rid of this little row home, mm-hmm. 38,000 bucks. I will mm-hmm. gift you the other half of the commission as your 3% down. And you can buy this, you know, oh, FHA wow. loan. Here's how it works. I'm so excited. 38,000 bucks. You know, I've got a good salary with Perkins. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and I can qualify for it. She sent me over the lender. I'm so excited to go home. And I think a lot of times people that are closest to you react when you're advancing Yes, and mm-hmm. they pull you back because they are so disappointed in all the things that they never did with their own life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was that moment at 18. So I tell them, I'm so excited. I'm under contract in the house. You, you know, I, I, I tell the story. You would have thought I kicked a baby. Oh, like, literally, you're going to ruin your life. Oh, my God. How are you oh, buying wow. investment property at 18? You're going to ruin your life. And that was about the same time I got that call, right, yeah. from Perkins to say, hey, would you consider relocating to North Carolina? And so I thought, you know, if I don't get out of here, if I don't leave this area, if I don't you know, cause I love them and I don't want to look them in the face every day and say, I don't want to be anything like you. Yeah, right. right? Yeah. And my grandfather, I love my mom, love my dad. That's not about them, yeah. but generally that feel of that area. Right. And, mm-hmm. and so I terminated the contract on that. I accepted the relocation. They paid for me to come down first to Charlotte and then ultimately to Wilmington. And I never looked back. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I have a question cause I love me some Perkins. Uh, <laughs> I knew we were going down the food route. <laughs> we can do it. No, because they did have some of the best chicken tendies back in the that day. That is fair. Uh, did you work with them up until they closed down the shops down here, or did you start diversifying while you were with them still? Yeah. So I, I was, you know, it's a 24 day restaurant. I'm in management. I'm single. I'm looking around. I'm going, Hey, I, I don't think I really want to raise a family in, in this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, we'll talk a little bit about like the three things that I ask, three questions I ask myself every day while it was a strength of mine, like I was really good at it. Mm-hmm. It wasn't my gift to the world, right? It, it oh, wasn't okay. my gift to the world. Wasn't to create restaurants and feed 
people. It was something different. And, you know, now I have a passion for the power of ownership mm -hmm. that drives me. That's a gift. I have a passion for longevity yeah. and health and those sorts of things. And I, I kind of look back and I was like, you know, I really, I really don't want to do this. So I better leave it before I get sucked into it, mm -hmm. you know, making good money. And, you know, I think that's the most dangerous place you can be is yes. comfortable, right? Yeah. yeah. Not advancing just a comfortable and I was comfortable and I was making good money, but it wasn't, it wasn't me. It wasn't where I wanted to go with my life. So I resigned from management in that. And I yeah. went to Outback and started okay. waiting tables a night. And mm -hmm. I registered as a non-traditional student in UNCW. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you went to college, breaking away from what your granddad was like, why are you going to do this? Exactly. What'd you go to school for? So I was, I was going to school for finance and political science. Okay. And I was waiting tables at Outback and I waited on this couple and, and actually she called me earlier today to wish me a happy birthday. She's like a second mom and mentor to oh, me so cool. now, but I'm waiting on him and she said, well, what are you doing? We just had this connection. Right. Mm -hmm. And she said, I, I said, I'm going to UNCW for finance and political science. And she said, gave me a business card. She said, my, my business is all about politics and money. Give me a call. Hmm. So the next day I called her and I went in and talked to her and she owned a mortgage company. Uh, okay. Yeah. And, oh. and she showed me the chart of how the pricing works in the mortgage business mm -hmm. and explained how commissions worked. She said, you can work during the day. I'll personally mentor you. You can keep your job at night. It's fully commissioned. And I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to college to get a job like this. Yes. Right. right. So I dropped all my classes in the dropout period. I took the job and it was in, an, I took the job in September. I started in October. I never looked back. I ended up running the company. Oh, wow. That's incredible. That awesome. It evolved from mortgage into real estate, real estate development and the things I kind of do today. And it was just a, an amazing opportunity from an amazing lady that, that really kind of helped me to, I think, realize what I already knew was in me. Right. Um, but gave me this amazing opportunity. I love to hear that. That's why, like, when you originally say, like, po politics and finance, I don't originally think of mortgage. I was thinking you were going to be like, oh, yeah, she ran, like, some something that funded, like, politicians, like, some big money fund. And I think that's actually kind of cool, like, because – when you mention certain things about going to school and college and just learning, people automatically think of one thing. And I'm glad that you at least opened my mind. I didn't think that was an option. Yeah, it was super cool. And and her and her husband were just like literally a second set of parents mm -hmm. to me. Her sons became like brothers. Yeah. And we ended up growing that company. She sold it to a bank that mm -hmm. bought out. And then I ended up for a little while working for the bank. So Oh, and then, sweet. and again, continue to evolve. And then probably in a, it was around 2000 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I ended up being completely self-employed. I resigned from the bank and, and, and just kind of went off on my own. And, and I've been that way ever since. Yeah. Yeah. So you go out on your own in 2000, did the tech bubble affect you then in that sense? Or nothing like that? No, not really. Uh, I, I've been a real estate guy most of my life. Right. And, and so I didn't really have a lot of investments in that. Mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, I didn't invest money in that. And, and what happened in the tech bubble, generally speaking, is when the stock market's in turmoil, the, the Fed lowers interest rates to stimulate the economy, True, which, which benefits <laughs> the mortgage business, right? Yeah. So, yes. and real estate. So, right. yeah, no. So actually those types of turmoil kind of benefit. Right. benefited me in that role, not hurt me very much. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Not at all. So in your capacity now, what are you mostly focusing on? So I have uh, a couple businesses, Murkowski Realty Group, and we, we market neighborhoods for some of the best builders in town. Okay. We've got a great team and love doing that. And yeah. we have a development business, Impact Development, and okay. we will buy land and develop neighborhoods. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'm partners with somebody else that's been on your podcast with a, a home care business called yeah. Synergy Home Care. And that helps people stay in their houses longer that might need a little bit of assistance. Mm -hmm. And that goes to that, you know, when I said, what's your major transformational purpose is the power of homeownership. Most of our neighborhoods are entry level, blue collar kind of neighborhoods, oh, okay. which is my passion. I'm not doing big golf course developments <laughs> right. or high rise <laughs> condos or anything like that because that doesn't kind of fit my my 
purpose, my gift. Right. Mm-hmm. And then the longevity thing is people live longer when they're in their homes yep. and they get to stay in there longer. And my partner that runs that business is a, just passionate about that. And I'm blessed mm-hmm. to be able to be partners with him and, and have that business, which we're just launching. So that's, that's kind of where I spend my time. That's awesome. Yeah. So what I do in my day to day is runs very similar with the home health care. So the, the way that we do it is through long-term care insurance and helping people who don't think that they can afford to stay in their homes to be able to afford to stay in their homes and not have to be shuttled out to wherever the state wants you to go. Uh, so, so it's really neat kind of having that. It's like talking to TJ with that too, and just kind of seeing where the similarities lie and like where possibly that I can help when someone gets to that point. Cause what can I do? Cause right now it's all future thinking. So like seeing it through the lens of someone else who's in that side is really eye opening to me too. Cause we don't really get to that part too often. And when we do the, the life expectancy is significantly shorter, unfortunately. It is. And, and TJ tells that great story about his, his own mom and right. the ability that she had to stay in her home right. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, right to the end. Right. And it it is a difference maker. Right. Absolutely. And and so what I, I I think we try to do or what I try to do is whatever I decide to spend my time on or invest money in is, Mm -hmm. is it going to make an, is it going to make a real difference? Is it not just about making money? Right. I Mm -hmm. mean, and that's okay. Like making money is fine because you could make a difference with it, but it it shouldn't be only about that. And, Mm -hmm. and so that's where we really, try to focus and lead in those areas. And I, I follow a guy, Brendan Burchard, who's a yeah. fantastic guy mm-hmm. and we do some coaching with him and it's uh, more, he, he calls it mortality motivation, right? He, he was in this horrible car wreck mm. and he asked himself three questions and, you know, did I live, did I love, and did I matter? And was in a coaching event with him and this kind of transformed my life a good bit. And he said, not, not in this esoteric sense, right? We think we get these advice or we read a quote and most people convert that to this big esoteric kind of thing. But it's like, did I live today? Did Mm -hmm. I love today? And did I matter today? Mm -hmm. Right. And everybody's got three different questions, but what in one of these events, it's like, what are your three questions? Right. Yeah. And I, we talked about stagnation and, To me, that's more dangerous, right, Right. is stagnation. We all know the family, the 10 years, perfect, the retirement account, the house, the picket fence, the sport utility vehicle, Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden somebody has an affair, they blow their life up. Well, when you don't feel like you're advancing, like as humans, we're designed to advance. So if we don't have challenges, life will throw them at us if we don't create them for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right. So my three questions became, was I advancing today? Right. Did I do something to advance myself with it physically, mentally, professionally, psychologically, any of those things? Did I advance today? Right. Did I live gift driven? Okay. Did I spend time in my gifts, not necessarily strengths. And I think those are two different things. And was I inspiring to those around me Mm. and not, not in an esoteric sense, but like today, did I do those three things today? And it's not always yes. Right. Right. right? It's not always yes. Sometimes I'm like, (laughs) I didn't do any of those three things today. (laughs) I need to go to bed and get better tomorrow. But I think if you can answer those three questions or, and for your listeners, like, what are your three questions? Right. Right. Is, like ask those, like think about that. And, yeah. and it's, it's an amazing kind of transformation. And so that, that really drives me on a daily basis. That's really neat. And we brought on coach Reggie a few yes. months back too, and he really helps small business owners and business owners grow their business as well. And one of the things we talked about was the importance of having a coach. So going back to Brendan and for me, Ben Newman, What's really cool is actually you're going to go see both of them at the same time. So yeah. two of the top five speakers in all of the United States, which is yeah. really neat. Well, and that same one is Ed Milet's going to oh, be so off. at so the three same of the five. one, yeah. which Sheesh. that his questions and his story are just amazing relative mm-hmm. to his, his, he's got a great, great story about having this dream when he was young and broke. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and if you know the story, mm-hmm. he had this dream where he died and went to heaven yeah. and he ends up in heaven and he's going through and let's call it St. Peter's there. And this other guy's there and he's talking to St. Peter and he's like, well, at least I made it here. 
right? Right. But he doesn't know who this other guy is. He does. He's like, yeah, it kind of looks familiar, but mm-hmm. I don't know really know who he is. Mm-hmm. And he asked St. Peter, he's like, excuse me, but who's that guy? And he said, well, that was you if you would have lived up to all the potential that was inside of you. Yeah. And he said, I looked nothing like that guy. Mm -hmm. And he woke up from that dream. And I have his quote in my office is chase down the man you were meant to be. Yep. Right. And, and so there, and and that's my definition uh, in, in not in a clinical way. Right. Right. My definition of anxiety and depression Mm. is unrealized potential. Yeah. Right. When you look in the mirror every day and you know, you have so much more in you and you're like, why did I do that again? Mm-hmm. Right. Why didn't I do and keep the promises I made to myself again? And that compound effect, which is also a great book by yeah. Darren Hardy, but that compound effect creates this anxiety and depression because you know, you have so much more in you. And so I, I get a lot of grief, not grief in a, in a bad way, but yeah. I say things to people mm-hmm. to challenge them in a lot of ways from a caring and loving perspective and I get away with it because I think they realize I'm doing that. But like, I think that's one of my gifts is I will push people into going, are you looking in the mirror? Are you advancing? Are you chasing down the person you were meant to be? Yeah. Right. Cause you have so much more in you and we all do, right. Yeah. We all have so much more in us. And when we, we look in the mirror, do you want to be proud or do you want to be regretful? And mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're going to be regretful some days. I mean, there's, everybody's got it. If, if, yeah. if you say you're not, you're not human or you're a liar. Right. Uh, exactly. But, but it's just a great mindset to, to start to adopt. So you're very motivating to me, just in general, sitting here talking. My question is I've noticed because we've been doing this for almost two years now and the people who I feel like have progressed the most from just like their stagnation point in life have all been ones who one found a coach and two read good books. So my question for you right now would be one, do you have coaches? If so, if you want to shout them out or what do they coach you on? And two, what was the first book that you picked up? That was like, all right, let's go. So from that, uh, I said it was 12, right? Yeah. I was 12 years yeah. old. So, uh, Tony Robbins, mm-hmm. right. I, I actually just saw him in England in July oh, uh, wow. and unleashed power then. But the first book I read that made a difference and I wish I could remember who turned me on to it, but I've read this book every single year, cover to cover at least once since I was 12 years old, mm. thinking grow rich by Napoleon Hill. Oh yeah. Right. And oh. it's a, a law of attraction mindset kind of book. And so that was the first book. That was the first one. Mm -hmm. And then I was kind of coming into this um, desire to be different, desire to grow, desire to contribute uh, and be different from all of the kind of the people around me. And Tony Robbins was just coming on the scene. So I've really read everything he's ever written. And then more recently on the longevity side, he's written Life Force with Peter Diamandis who we talk about books and stuff, Bold by Peter Diamandis. There's there's so many. I mean, I could talk about books for, <laughs> yeah. you know, for an hour alone of, you know, I have a literally people that know me, they, they're they like, hey, send me the list. And it's my recommended books and podcast list. Like uh, I have one, like a live document. I'm like, oh, my God, I got to add this. This is better than that. That's out. Yeah. You know, but it, it you know, w- I, I believe the quality of your life is based on the quality of your inputs, mm-hmm. right? What you see, what you listen to, who you talk to, like mm-hmm. what you allow in food, all of those things determine the quality of your life yep. on a compound basis, on a daily basis. And so we can watch the murder mysteries and we could read all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. But if we, if we kind of make a conscious decision, that compound effect really does change your life. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to um, touch on something that you mentioned before too, like the the exponential growth part of it too, and not being stagnant and everything. That's actually kind of how I got on my growth journey as well too, and got set up with Ben Newman. Is right before I had my first son, I was kind of looking at my life, just kind of taking a step back and just kind of analyzing, hey, where am I at now? There's a really big change that's coming up. Like, what's going on here? Because I feel like I should I should be happier. I feel like there's something I'm missing. And I realized that all of the small goals that I had set for myself, I had hit. Mm. And I'm going, this is, this is what's wrong 
is that there's, I'm not striving for anything right now. I've come to a complacency. I'm just doing the motions over and over again. I'm creating random problems like to be in my life because people need some type of conflict, like what you said. And like, what do I need to do now? And I don't know if my phone was like listening to my thoughts or whatever the case may be. Oh, they're they always do. listening. <laughs> um, but then I saw like Ben Newman's thing came up with his mental toughness forum and very similar because they all run in the same group. So they have like a similar but different message that they all put together. But just his message of like, hey, what's your standard to life? Like what makes you happy every day? And not that like eating chocolate cake makes you happy every day, but what genuinely <laughs> is like pushing you to be the best version of yourself. And then that's when I saw Ed Milet. I have that same quote in my office as well too. That's awesome. Um, Cause that was the one thing, like I started crying to be honest with you when I first heard that. Cause I was like, the, it hit home and it hit home right when it needed to hit home. So I wrote it down and put it in my office and, that, and that's where it stays today. So like, it's really cool kind of hearing that same story from someone else. Yeah, it's super cool. So there's three, three ways to live life essentially that you can distill it down to three C's. You either mm-hmm. live a caged life, right? Where mm-hmm. everybody else tells you what to do and you just accept it and you're caged. Yeah. Okay. You live a comfortable life where you're not really advancing. You're comfortable. You're right there. Or you live a challenged life mm-hmm. and creating meaningful challenges for yourself, that triathlon, that marathon, that additional language, that whatever it is. And what I think is interesting in my own life that I've experienced and I'm blessed to be where I am today. If you don't create those meaningful challenges for yourself, life throws out challenges to you that you have no control over what they are. But it's amazing when you have created your own meaningful challenges so much of the rest of your life gets better and doesn't create challenges you don't want to handle, mm-hmm. right? You just kind of handle it. And it's, it's pretty fascinating. And it, it really is. Mindset is everything. Words matter. I'm not a big fan of self-deprecation because it's just not good, right? right. You shouldn't speak poorly of yourself or others around you because that self-talk makes a huge difference in your life. And I said that and they're like, oh, I was just kidding. I was like, yeah. Do you know how many comedians that were self-deprecating committed suicide? Yeah. Right. I mean, it words matter like day after day, rich, famous on stage Mm -hmm. out there, all the money they could have all the women or men they wanted or, or whatever their preference was. Right. And they still hated their life because it's every day they made fun of themselves. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and those little things make a long-term compound effect difference in your life. So I, I do challenge those around me when they say stuff like that. They know they'll, they'll I, I didn't mean that. Right. I didn't mean it. Cause yeah. they know I'm going to be like, don't talk like that. Don't talk. If you want to talk like that, not around me, that's okay. Yeah. But, or, but don't, don't do that around me. Cause I'm going to call you out. And, and it's, it makes such a difference to live that challenged life. And it's so exhilarating to be able yeah. to do that. I'm glad you brought that up too, because it's something else I wanted to say. The very first time, like I officially met you, was with Catherine and TJ and a few other people at the mm-hmm. restaurant. And you said something that, like, I, I kind of knew it, like in concept, but hearing it, like, from you in an actual, like, quote made the most difference to me. And what I enjoy that you do is you don't love people into a lower level. And that was something you said, don't allow people around you to love you into a lower level. And that was super impactful. And and again, one of those things I needed to hear at that moment in my time. So I appreciate you saying that. And it just, it really resonates. And I think it resonates for a lot of people once they wrap their mind around that. Yeah. Cause, and, and, and and again, not taking away a lot of people that are closest to you Mm -hmm. will love you into a lower level. And they will, oh, just slow down a little bit. Oh, you just, you just need to slow down. Well, you know, you need to be a little bit more balanced. Mm -hmm. Well, do you know what a balanced scale says? Zero. It means you're doing nothing. Right. And, and so, and and you can respectfully fire people that think they're an architect of your life without even telling them. Mm -hmm. Right. You can just, thank you so much. I appreciate that, but not listen at all. Yeah. And, and people will love you in their lower level. Friends will do it. Family will do it. And if you're consciously aware of it, then you, you just kind of get to block that out yeah. and just do your thing. One of the most amazing studies I have that impacted my life it, it, when I read it and I understood it 
it was the biggest like jump in the deep end of the cold pool wake up mm -hmm. study. So the they they recruited a bunch of people to come to a job fair. Okay. And they set them in a separate room and they said, "Hey, we want to see if there's a discriminatory event if you have a scar, right? If you have a visible scar." So they had makeup artists mm -hmm. and they painted makeup artists painted a scar on people. And they said, "Now this is a real job fair. The the interviewers and the companies have no idea that we're doing a study and that you're not a real candidate. So they had real mm -hmm. resumes and they really were going into a job interview. Mm -hmm. So they painted it. They showed him in the mirror, the scar. And then right before, and it takes a while to paint a scar on to make it look real. Right, yeah. So it's like, a, you know, a couple hours right before they go into the interview, they got a touch up of the mm -hmm. scar and they went in the interview. Here's what was the most impactful thing about, how we think as humans that came out of that for me mm -hmm. and they come back and here's, here's what was amazing. How many people said my scar, right? They owned something that was placed on them so fast and wow. took ownership of it, which we all do sometimes, right? Yeah. We let yeah. other people give us something that we then accept. That's a flaw. That's not even real. It's mm -hmm. not even really there. Right. And the reports of discrimination were off the charts. Oh, I know this question was because I had a scar. Here's what's interesting. They held the mirror up and the touch up was they removed the scar. It was never <laughs> actually there. And the lesson for me in that is one, how fast we own things we don't need to own mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that deter us from advancing. And second is we find what we look for. Mm -hmm. Right. They were looking for discrimination because they had a scar that never even existed anymore. And when they showed the mirror, people were flabbergasted. No, they, they, and they were still sure that it was quote, their scar that caused discrimination. And it wasn't even there. Wow. How much, how many of us go through life like that? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so this having a little bit of a conscious awareness of that thought process can make the biggest difference in the world to you and those around you. Yeah. To that point too. I mean, to not sound too cheesy, but like how many people walk around right now, not with a scar on their face, but a scar on their heart. Right. And they just walk around with that burden all the time when that it was never there is anyway, to your point. Yeah, it, it wasn't, it was some, something somebody else put on you. Mm -hmm. Or how many of that is really that, that event, whatever it was, is actually your superpower. Yeah. Right. Uh, I was talking to my mom about this and, you know, again, she was pregnant, had me at 16 years old mm -hmm. and to some, that's a scar, right? Mm -hmm. That's a, a failure. But my mom is one of the most nurturing, loving and caring people. So I'm like, you need to talk to other pregnant teen girls. Like yeah. the, you, you better than anybody can relate. So in many cases, it, you, you have to take whatever it was, right? I moved probably, I don't know, 15 times when I was a kid through school. Mm. I, have, I have an ability to relate quickly, make friends quickly because of that, right? right. I could be angry about it. I could look at kids that graduated all together and spent every year of school together, mm -hmm. or I could go, wow, that's my superpower. And so many people take what is the scar, yeah. right? That's real, not diminishing the reality that there's challenges, but it's their superpower and they don't use it. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so I think you can, you can convert those real scars. One, what baggage are you carrying? That's not real that somebody else gave you. Yeah. Right. It's like an email inbox. It's, it's other people's priorities, yeah. right? If you don't turn the notifications off and you just focus on what you want to focus on, you're just reacting to other people's priorities. Mm -hmm. So many of us put backpacks on every day that have other people's scars, other people's weight. Right. And it's not even yours. Right. So my, my challenge to people around me is drop that backpack, look in the mirror, get understanding of it, Get rid of it. And then what are your three questions that you want to ask yourself every day that you can become all that you really are? And it's amazing how fast those feelings of depression, those feelings of anxiety, those feelings of lack. And, and, and to a certain degree, 
I do have the resiliency to not care if anybody else comes along. Right? Yeah. And, and it's hard to watch the loved ones not want to come along because you just want them to, right? You mm-hmm. want them to get it. You yeah. want them to get it. And some are never going to get it. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Yeah. That was a very hard lesson for me to learn. When I was graduating high school, there was a friend of mine who I saw just a ton of potential and I just knew I'm like, all right, you need to move down to Wilmington with me. Just get away from everyone else, but you're where you're from. Like, get out of the friend zone. Like, let's let's just go down here together and let's just kill it. Let's let's go. And just couldn't get out of her own way and didn't want to do it. And just every excuse that possible could come up came up, even if it was just like a false excuse that just like, oh well, it's like it's Tuesday today. I don't like to make that decision on like whatever the case may be. And that was the hardest thing seeing with someone with so much potential to be able to say like, Hey, if you can't help yourself, I can't help you. Mm-hmm. And like, it, it hurts to be able to do that. But at some point you have to put down the baggage of someone else and take, take you and go on your own way. Yeah. And when you fly, they say you got to put your own oxygen mask yeah. on first, yes. right? You can't help anybody else if you're passed out. Right. I think <laughs> right. when you're the brightest light, mm-hmm. other people will, will flock towards you. But if you dim yourself, until you can try to get them to come along that then you both kind of just do this struggle all your life. And then you turn around. Like I, I I say this about homeownership today and you know, I've never heard an interview or talked to somebody in their seventies or eighties on their deathbed and late in life that ever, ever, ever said, I wish I'm going to move slower. I wish I would have waited longer. 100% of them say, man, I wish I would have done that. Could you, sooner. I wish I would have bought the house faster. I wish I would have asked that lady to marry me quicker. That mm-hmm. may, I wish I would have said yes to the guy quicker, whatever it is, right? Nobody late in life ever says they wish they would have moved slower and regrets that, that right. They wish they would have moved faster. They wish they would have made that. They wish they would have jumped mm-hmm. and done things that they then regret later. So I, I think it's, I'm hopeful mm-hmm. that the people listening to this and, right. and, and it motivates me jump in, do it right. If it's on your heart, you know, go for it Mm -hmm. because we live in a, we live in a, and it's funny, there's, you know, you, you watch the media and the one word I cannot stand is unprecedented. Nothing going on today is unprecedented (laughs) by the way, right? Climate change. There have been hurricanes for hundreds and hundreds of years. You talk about ones that hit Texas that killed thousands of people. Mm -hmm. You talk about the Palestinian Israeli conflict. You talk, I mean, think about what we went through in the forties and fifties and sixties and world war two and segregation and all of these things that we're not living. What's unprecedented is how fast it gets reported. It's not the <laughs> right. actions, right? Yes. And so you can f- come up with all these excuses, but we're not in unprecedented times, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there are some things that you are challenging for sure, and I don't diminish those, but none of those have to pause you from living life. Right. None of those have to pause you from living in your gifts. None of those have to pause you, as Steve Jobs said, was, what are you going to do to make a dent in the universe? And that dent in the universe might be, I'm going to be the best mom ever, Yeah. right? I'm going to create, I'm going to be the Neo of my family and change my family's line. It doesn't Mm -hmm. need to be this massive thing, but what is it? Like, what is it that jazzes you up that wakes you up in the morning without an alarm? And that, that may be the 5k that that may be people doing the half marathon or the half uh, Ironman tomorrow, like whatever it is, just pick it and Mm -hmm. go for it. And stop coming up with all the excuses and stop letting people love you and no love. Oh, you don't need to do that. You're already in good shape. I love, I mean, not, I love people that say, I don't understand why it's all the skinny people that keep running. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. I mean, it, you know, it's like, right. it's like you, you're going to get some results if you do it yeah. and, and just live life. Right. It's mm-hmm. so amazing. And particularly in this area, I mean, we live we live in an amazing place yeah. that literally I, I, I try to do the beach every morning and watch the sunrise or get up early. And I'm an early riser by yeah. nature. That doesn't mean that people that don't get up early aren't successful, right? I don't subscribe right, yeah. to that. I do think that you should have a sacred start to your day. 
mm-hmm. right? You, if it's 10 minutes or two hours, like come up with a sacred start, whether that's, I'm going to read this, I'm going to meditate. I'm going to pray if you're faithful, like whatever it is, like yeah. come up with a sacred start. If that's 9am or 4am, it doesn't matter. But I do think you really have the ability to charge yourself for the day by having a sacred start. Part of that is watching that. And I really reflect how few people are out at the beach in the morning, mm-hmm. taking a walk with a cup of coffee mm-hmm. or going for a jog or whatever it is. There are people that save for two years, three years, four years for the privilege of coming to this area on a vacation. Yeah. And so I'd challenge everybody to go, just stop. And again, going back to that scar question, right? Or that scar story, you seek what you look for, right? Look around at the amazing area and the amazing ability to live life here and and just start enjoying it more. Mm -hmm. That's a story that I've been telling people recently too. So my son's three and he came up to us a few months ago and was like, daddy, I want to go to the beach. And it, it took me back, not because like I was too busy to take him to the beach or we, it didn't make sense at that moment, but it took me back because I grew up in Amish country, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I went to the beach for five days out of the whole entire year, yep. once a year. And for him to say that to me, I'm like, we can't go today, but we'll go tomorrow, bud. And just be like, oh my gosh, I can right. take him to the beach any day of the week that I want. Cause I'm right down. And it makes you take a step back and be like, okay, I need to be grateful what's right in front of me now. Yeah, and, and it doesn't. And and you didn't go to the beach. You went to the shore, right? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, it was <laughs> right, the shore. I'm from Pennsylvania. Yeah, we didn't know. go to the beach. We went down to the shore. Yeah. <laughs> right, you For are. all the Yankees listening to this the, yeah. this podcast, you'll know that. But but yeah, and, and I have a daughter. I've, I've been blessed. to. She's 19. She's going to be 20 early next year for a uh, sophomore at UNCW. And that's I've great. been blessed to be a single dad raising her yeah. for a long time. And, you know, that's, it's a similar thing. This, this, I, I hope and I challenge people to get back that childlike wonderment, mm-hmm. right? I think the best people I know still dream as adults, Yep. They still have this wonderment. They still make stupid jokes and corny jokes and those sorts of things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just like who you want to be around, right? And then you have the old codgers, right? <laughs> yeah. I've met 30 year olds that act older than 70 year olds. Oh, <laughs> yeah. my God. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just crazy. And so, but yeah, the kid thing will change your world. Oh, yeah. And, it, greatest blessing of my life is to be a parent and it's so it's so fun to watch that i'm so excited for you at three three years old it just keeps getting better by the way that's good enough thank you and (laughs) and it it, and one of the one of my kind of pet peeves was when when parents and i think they say it out of endearment is i wish you were still Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. how many how many we've all heard it right oh i just i wish you to me, what a kid hears is, so you don't like me now, mm, yeah. right? They don't, they don't, they don't translate that. And so it, it literally keeps getting better. Like when they, when you can start to speak with them, right. right? And when they're reversed in the car seat, in the back seat, and yeah. now it goes forward, oh, this is so good. I can see you in the rear view mirror. <laughs> yeah. And then when they get to sit in the front seat with you, and then when they get like every, and, and now they're driving and you're sitting in the passenger, yeah. like it's such an exciting and wonderful, and it literally just keeps getting better. That's neat. Thank you so much for sharing that because too many times, kind of back to what you were saying before is you talk to other parents and they're like, yep, just a whole new set of challenges. And you're just like, I mean, I guess that's life. But <laughs> I mean, yeah. every day is going to bring you a new challenge. Right. And yeah. I think it depends on what you look for. If you're excited because yeah. you're alive, right. As, you know, what? it was, it was great. I was at a seminar with actually with Brendan mm-hmm. uh, Burchard, who that's my coach, by the way, right, like yeah. that's, that's a lead coach for me. And, but he, this guy stood up and he was interviewing. And he says, I just, I just want to be like, I just don't want any stress. And he just looked at me and said, so you want to be dead? <laughs> Right. I mean, a stress free life is you're dead. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you have an expectation, that's a faulty expectation. Like we create these expectations that guarantee failure. Mm-hmm. So you look in the mirror, you're like, I failed today because I had stress. What are you yeah. talking right. about? Right. Oh, I'm a parent and my kid wasn't perfect. So I'm a horrible parent and parenting sucks. What are you talking about? Right. Mm-hmm. And, and parenting's exciting because it's so 
different every day. Yeah. And if mm-hmm. your mindset is embrace it, right? It's kind of like relationships yeah. as well. Marriages, girlfriends, boyfriends, like if you embrace those differences and challenges and you start to see not the scars, but the excitement of it all, what a difference yeah. that yeah. it gets to make in your life. I love that. So I got my, one of my last questions for you. What, I mean, we talked about a lot of things that you've done in your past and what you're doing currently, but what would success look like for you? I think challenging people around me to be all that they can be makes me feel successful. I I think, I think that that would be how I would define success. It would be to be that shining light, Mm -hmm. to be that person that people go, you know what? I think I'm a little bit better because of my interactions with Mike. And, and if I, if, if, if there's just a, a handful of people that get to say that, you know, I think I can lay my head on the pillow at night. I asked those three questions, yeah. right? Was I inspiring to those around me? Did I live gift driven? And was I advancing? And if most of the time I can answer yes to one or all three of those questions, and sometimes there's going to be days where it's a no on all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but I think that's what that, that would make me feel like I've, you know, kind of contributed to the world and to the people around me. Yeah. And so my final question to build off of that, if you were to tell your younger self one thing, what would it be? Don't wait. I love it. Go for it. Right. Don't, don't talk yourself out of your dreams. I think most people to borrow a NASCAR term, add their own restrictor plate Mm -hmm. that, that doesn't even need to be added to their lives and don't let people love you into a lower level. Mm -hmm. Don't love them less because they don't have the insight you have. Right. But you don't have to shrink because they don't. So my advice to my younger self would be go for it and don't don't even restrict yourself because it, 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 literally everything is right in front of you and in the world, in life, and you can truly be the Neo of your family. You mm-hmm. can make that difference. To borrow a term from that movie, The Matrix. Yeah, you know, yeah, for those, yeah. yeah right. I, I, for those that are listening, <laughs> I'm like, borrowing the term from yeah, The Matrix, yeah, yeah. but... Like I, I'm the Neo of my life financially. Mm -hmm. I think my daughter's the Neo of our family educationally. Like she's going for a master's degree in finance and wants to go on to law school. You know, I didn't do any of that stuff. I, you know, I'm I'm blessed to be able to hire people that I got, that I need, but you know, you can, you can be the Neo of your family's line, whether you're 10, 20 or 80. Mm-hmm. You can make a difference today in your mindset and in the way you get to influence the way that your family thinks going forward. That's great. I, I love that. Yeah. So my actual last question is, do you have social media and can people like follow you or figure out how to use your, your insights on getting a house, you know, growing, staying in their house a little bit longer if they're older? Yeah. So I'm at, M J R O K O S K I for Instagram. Yeah. And I'm not super social media um, <laughs> guy. I probably need to get better at it, but if you message me on that, I'll respond. And yeah, I love helping people either get into home ownership. I've got an amazing team, build wealth through investment, retire mm-hmm. a little more comfortably with positive cash flow from investment property. Yeah. If it's synergy, if you have a family member or anybody that needs some home care, with people that truly are passionate about that and aren't just out to make a dollar. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, certainly making a profit is, is good for the economy and for everybody, but we, we do it from our hearts first and then we understand business. So yeah, at MJ Rakoski would be a great place to message me. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I greatly appreciate it. And happy birthday. So I hope thank, this was good enough for you. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, it was awesome. I appreciate it so much. And thanks okay. for having me. And thanks for the larceny. Shout Absolutely. out to their to their distillery and the quality of their bourbon. Definitely. I love that. Thank you guys for listening to the podcast. As per usual, we'd love it if you like, comment, share. You know, the more people that listen, the better quality the videos will become. And yes. Yep. Because we're shifting, we're going to eventually, you know, have a YouTube and, you know, social media, all the big things. So the more you share stuff, help us grow, the better off we'll be. Yeah. Thank you so much. 
Have a good one. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks.